Hello, and welcome to episode 10 of Project Mouse. In this episode, I finally finish making all the parts for the mouse, and fitting them together before getting the mouse into primer. Episode 9 saw the first stage of the upper hull detailing being completed, as well as the 3D printed hatches and grills being test fitted into the upper hull. Being scratch built, the mouse doesn't come with a set of instructions, so I've made a list of all the tasks and parts I still have to make and fit prior to painting. Hopefully this way I won't miss anything off. Some of the 3D printed parts I wanted to convert into metal, as they'd be too fragile in resin. The best way of doing this is to make cold cure silicon moulds and cast them in pewter. This is a method I've used for many years and often refer to it in my blog and vlog. So I've decided to create a how-to video series where I explain in depth the techniques and tips I use for various aspects of my model making. Hopefully you'll find them interesting and try out some of these techniques in your own projects. Episode 1 will be about designing and making silicon moulds for pewter casting. Episode 2 will then show you how to cast safely from your new silicon moulds. Now let's get back to my mouse to-do list. After some research, I decided to open up the gun ports in the turret sides. I drilled out the old welded up gun ports and glued in 3D printed parts. These were then blended in with milliput. I then cleaned up the 3D printed upper hull grills and hatches and super glued them into place, paying careful attention to getting them level and the panel gaps even. The cast headlights have been cleaned up and installed, together with the 3D printed conduits. Wiring was added with fuse wire. I wasn't happy with my first 3D prints of the fuel tank, so I decided to reprint it in a different resin. The result was much better this time round. The parts were super glued together, and any gaps were filled with milliput. I added more detail to the strapping with plasticard, and recreated the fuel line with 1mm copper wire. Various sizes of heat shrink were used to recreate the pipe joints, and off cuts of photo etched brass were bent up for the pipe brackets. The aerial mounts were cast and cleaned up before being glued into place. The brass aerial wire was easily tapered with a file, and a heat shrink sleeve was added to the base. After a lot of searching, I managed to source some accurate chain for the loader's hatch. The 3D printed covers for the final drive were super glued into recesses cut into the sides of the lower hull. The locations for the outer suspension brackets were also scribed in. The brackets on the back edge of the hull were cast and fitted. I don't know what they were for. Maybe a future mudguard installation. I don't know. The cast convoy light and its 3D printed cover were next on the list and marked the completion of the rear end of the mouse. I rescribed some of the front hatch detail and added a handle from 0.8mm brass. To recreate the periscope glass, I cut down a sheet of acrylic and glued it into place together with the 3D printed cover. The turret ring was then 3D printed on my Ultimaker 3D printer in ABS and bonded into place. I had a small clearance issue when I fitted the turret, so I had to reprofile part of the lower edge and then retexture it with milliput. While I was on the turret, I decided to take back the texture a little in places and fitted the periscope. Again this was cut down from an acrylic sheet. The yellow flash is insulation tape used to mask the clear portion of the optics. Before priming, I'll paint the back faces of the optics white to help create some depth and reflections. The cast exhausts were finally cleaned up, drilled out and glued into place, completing the assembly of the mouse. And here it is, fully assembled and ready for primer. It is a monolithic beast of a tank and would have made a very intimidating weapon had it been viable for deployment on the battlefield. I'm so pleased to get to this stage. Everything lines up straight and true, which is always a relief. The proportions look really good when compared with the period photos. Now I can finally get it into primer. This will even out the surface and the highlight areas to fill or where excess glue needs to be removed. Right, let's have a final check on the to-do list, just to make sure I've done everything. Item 19 still needs to be tackled. Maybe you can help me with that. To prime the mouse, I'm continuing to use Halford's Red Oxide Rattle Can Primer. You get plenty in a can, and it goes on really well. The turret is the first to get the primer. 
mainly around the lower front edge where I reprofiled and textured. Then it's onto the fuel tank, which I had to do in two passes as it was a bit of an awkward shape to hold. I don't like spraying on my vise, but it'll clean up okay. Now for the main event, the upper hull. I start by spraying the underside before flipping it over to tackle the upper surface. The primer adheres really well to the variety of materials and unifies all the different colours, making it easier to see what's going on. Let's take a look at the mouse, with it all now fully assembled. And here it is, ready for paint. It's so good to at last see it all in primer. It really marks the end of the stage of creating and fitting the parts, and the start of the final finishing phase of the build. I've learnt so much on this project, and I'm itching to start the next one. I've already decided on the subject and scale. There's even a clue in this video for you to find out what the next project will be. But before then, I have to strip the mouse back down and start on the painting and weathering. This is something I've been looking forward to for a long time. So make sure you hit subscribe to catch the next episode of Project Mouse, to see it in camo for the first time. I hope you find Project Mouse interesting and enjoy seeing the progress. If you do, hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more from Staples and Vine. If you have any questions about Project Mouse, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.